Let us stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Brady died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. body bound and drenched with tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O Lord, O Lord our God. Then on the third at break of dawn the son of heaven rose again oh trample death where is your sting the angels roar for Christ the King oh praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our shall return in robes of white like the blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face
Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O Lord, O Lord our Let's bow our heads and pray. O God, in whom sinners find mercy and saints find joy, we pray to you for our brother Brady, whose body we honor with Christian burial, that he may be delivered from the bonds of death, admit him to the joyful company of your saints, and raise him on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated now for the proclamation of God's word. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But the souls of the just are in the hands of God, and no, matter, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction of their going forth from us, utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men, indeed, they be punished, Yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold is in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and as the faith faithful shall abide with him in love because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. My 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. So we are always courageous, although we know that we, we are at the home, in the body we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When he saw the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Before the homily, I just want to thank a few people. I want to um, thank our uh, Monsignor Inky for being here and representing um, our, one of our other Catholic parishes, St. Edward the Confessor, and for also uh, Deacon Patrick for being here and representing Blessed Sacrament Parish, for the Bishop of the Diocese of Columbus, Bishop Brennan, for being here and uh, praying with us and offering the prayers of so many in our diocese as we offer the sacrifice of the Mass for Brady. I also want to thank um, Deb Shelley for all of your care and concern in helping the family during the funeral planning process. Um, and Sally and Ed, who are our principal and our vice principal and our teachers, for all of the love and the tender loving care that they provided to many of our students and these days and this week. For Terry and Jeff and for the rest of the family for opening your hearts and your lives so that we can be present with you and pray with you and love you. Brady Hempelman. I want to give a few snapshots of his life, some qualities and characteristics that help us all see Brady. Brady's family chose scripture passages for us to hear today. I'd like to look briefly at one of them and how God's word is speaking to us today. Then I will end with a story and an invitation which I pray honors the way Brady lived his life. Brady was born on March 22, 2008 to Jeff and Terry Hempelman. He was the youngest of four children. He has two brothers, Riley and Corey, Corey and also his sister, Allie. He was a miracle child at birth and definitely a gift from God to his family and so many of us here at St. Francis de Sales. As is attest to here at this funeral mass and then yesterday for five hours an endless line of people coming to pray for him and with the family and to honor his life. He was a parishioner and a student here at our school. According to Brady's family, he got the best qualities of each family member. He certainly got the best hair, blonde and curly. Brady was a peacemaker, a helper, and a prayer warrior. In fact, since a very young age, Brady lived his faith very openly, honestly, and passionately. He was a boy filled with the Holy Spirit. From his love of God, he often prayed for others, such as Brooke Shute, uh, struggling with cancer, one of our parishioners, or Aunt Annette or Aunt Amy, just to name a few. At the very young age of nine, he told his Aunt Amy, who was struggling with health issues, that he prayed for her every night before falling asleep. Brady trusted in God. This trust didn't mean that he understood God and God's ways. Who of us, even adults, understands the ways of God, let alone the ways of other human beings and the ways of our world? Nevertheless, Brady trusted in God and loved him and prayed for others to know God, love God, and to serve God in this world as he did. It was from this place of love, in fact, that Brady wanted everyone to be happy, and thereby was the constant peacemaker. Because he saw the good, the true, and the beautiful in God, he was able to see them in you. 
always kind, friendly. He encouraged others, including them rather than excluding them. He was energetic and optimistic and positive in his relationship with people in his life, be they family, friends, teachers, coaches, classmates, teammates. Brady definitely had a competitive nature. He was tough on himself, striving to improve in his sports, but never letting his identity and worth rise or fall with the win or loss of a game. He simply loved playing the game, pushing himself, hanging out with friends, being on a team, working toward a common goal and having fun along the way. He was very appreciative and grateful for even the small things in life. He would lead the table after eating dinner and thank his mom for the food. They would go out to eat and he thanked his parent, parents for the meal. Indeed, Brady embodied not only some of the finest qualities of his family members, but also some of the attributes that we all strive to live out in our own lives as we reach for God and reach for one another. Here are some of the memories that the seventh grade classmates shared this past week at school. Brady had a tremendous work ethic. Sid Gummer said this, after one of Mrs. Smith's discussions, I looked at my notes. Next, I looked at Brady's. He had a full page. I knew that I had missed something. Brady always took the best notes. Cody York. At Damascus, Brady climbed the rock wall like a champ. And then Henry Hitchens chimed in. Brady had a giant tree in his backyard. He climbed that like a champ too. Miller Hutchinson said this, Brady wanted to be a star football player so bad. At practice, he went 110%. All of Brady's classmates remember how at Damascus, Brady bravely got up in front of everyone and danced the warm. <laughs> now, I don't know if I know the warm, but apparently Brady was the best warm dancer. Mrs. Elwell, one of our teachers, I think speaks for all of Brady's teachers when she said this. Brady was so vivacious and energized about every class activity and assignment. I would do a mini lesson, explain the activity, and then 10 seconds later, he would be raising his hands with questions. Brady was super inquisitive and always seeking answers. He's probably standing before God himself right now, asking him all of his questions. And he's definitely spending some time with Colby Bryant. <laughs> Number seven, Wes Stone. Wes tells a story about Brady. Brady came to spend the night. We we're all out front tossing the football back and forth. I threw a long one, and Brady, who always went all out, ran into the mailbox trying to catch it. Bloody nose and no catch. Finally, Mrs. Mummy, our principal, remembers this story about Brady, which his family shared with us when we were with him in the hospital last week. The entire family rented a cabin in Gatlinburg. One morning, three carfuls of family headed to Dollywood, about 25 minutes away. They arrived, got out of their cars, and no Brady. I thought Brady was with you. No, I, I thought he was with you. Lo and behold, Brady was back at the cabin, alone. When they rushed back and got back to the cabin, Brady said, I locked all the doors so the bears wouldn't get me. <laughs> Home alone all over again. Home alone? No. Brady's not home alone. In the scriptures that Brady's family chose for us to hear at his funeral mass, 
St. Paul teaches us in the second letter to Corinthians chapter 5 this. We know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. St. Paul himself reminds us that Brady is not alone. In fact, he is home. Home in heaven. Heaven, St. Paul is telling us, is our eternal home. The building, our bodies, that we have while we are with one another in this side of life will not last. While we are at home in the body, here and now, we are away from the Lord. This should give us comfort and consolation. For the grace of Jesus Christ and by the way that Brady lived his life, seeking to know God, love God, and serve God in this life, both directly and indirectly by how he cared for so many others, Brady gets to go home to be with God and countless others who live forever in the love of God in heaven. The place where, we, where all the love that Brady's family has poured into him over his life and all the love that we have shared with him, all the love that God has given him in this life is fulfilled, perfected, perpetuated into a life of unending joy, beauty, a constant unfolding of the fullness of God's life and all that dwells within him. But of course, no one expected Brady to return home so soon, so young. In fact, when we experience the loss of Brady or any other young person or a young parent, when a tragic accident happens, when the weather causes damage to property or persons, when we are unjustly injured or wronged, when life is unfair, when we know loss, like the loss of our health or home or job and our important relationship, whenever we know the deprivation, deprivation of separatedness from what we expect and hope for and live for in this life, we automatically ask the question, where are you, God? Such a good question. And we should ask this question every day as we experience the ups and downs of living in this fallen world. The problem can occur, though, when we ask this question. When we try to answer our own question and separate from our faith in God, when we run into suffering in this many various forms in this life, and we try to make sense of it, separate from God, then we come up and with, come up with all sorts of our own answers to our own question, leading to this state in life, or something along these lines. God is absent. God's to blame. God should have prevented this. God doesn't care for us. God isn't all good. God isn't all powerful. God does not exist. God cannot be trusted. No. We mustn't try to answer our own questions and certainly not separate from our faith in God. Instead, in the face of what is unfair, unjust, wrong, senseless, in the face of great suffering and loss, the only answer we can know for sure is not the one that will intellectually satisfy us. The only answer is person. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's the only one who makes sense of our suffering. While we will never understand God fully and his ways in our earthbound life, let alone understand people and their ways or the ways of the world at any given moment, we can know this truth. God is with us. And 
God was with Brady at the moment of his death. Not to take him, but to receive him. God is not to blame for all that happens to us in this life, but he is with us as we experience all that happens to us in this life. We see this so clearly over and over in the blessed book that God has given us, the Bible. Even from the beginning of humanity, God shows us that it was never a part of his original design for humanity to suffer, to know loss, to die. Never a part of his plan that we be separated from him and when we hurt one another, separate ourselves from each other. Never his will that we, our hearts should ache or break. Yet, living in a world separated from him and each other, which God did not cause and for which God is not to blame, God nevertheless decides to not leave us alone in our broken human condition. Instead, he decides to join us in all that causes us to suffer. He becomes one of us, human, and one with us in Jesus Christ, his son, so that he would suffer, so that we would forever know that we are not alone. This is how we know that we're not alone. He suffers because of us, certainly, but he also suffers for us, and he suffers with us. So that even our suffering, if we allow it, can be a means of drawing us closer to God rather than allowing our suffering to be the reason we depart from God or stay at a distance from him. Jesus never promised us that we would not suffer in this life. Instead, he promises us that we would not suffer alone. Then he enjoins us, pick up your cross and follow after me. We will always have crosses in this broken world, in our broken hearts, bodies, minds, and relationships. But if we join our crosses to his, then even our suffering becomes meaningful, redemptive. And suffering is no longer senseless and purposeless and in vain. Suffering can lead us to a savior as we cry out to him. But it takes trust, and that's hard. Trusting in God, even when we don't quite understand him, and even when we sometimes, in our minds, get him wrong. Brady trusted in God and loved God. And this was enough for him. His life, his example, is perhaps one of the greatest gifts that he leaves us as he returns home. I want to give a final thought here through a story, something from our American history, something that Brady and his classmates would have been exposed to as they study history in our classrooms here at St. Francis Catholic Church and school. Something I know made a difference in Brady's life and something I pray helps you today. It is from the life of President Thomas Jefferson. It's from a biography of President Thomas Jefferson. President Jefferson was crossing a swollen river on a horseback. He and a group of his men were traveling on horseback. They came upon a river after a long rain. The bridge was washed out. They would have to cross the river on horseback, which can be very dangerous, even life-threatening, to the high, rapid currents. A stranger, standing along the banks with them, watched as each man struggled to cross, some falling off their horses. All eventually made it, but not without great effort. The stranger approached Jefferson and asked for his assistance on getting across. Jefferson invited him to come up and sit with him on his horse. They made it across. One of the men in the company asked him why he had asked the President of the United States for a ride. 
That was a pretty bold move on his part. The man was shocked to find out that he had asked the president for assistance. Nevertheless, he gave his response to the men. I asked him because I looked at all your faces, and in each of your faces said no. But this man's face said yes. I knew he would be the one who would get me to the other side. I knew I could trust him. Brady trusted Jesus. And he knew that Jesus would be the one who would get him to the other side. Let's pray f for this. For ourselves and our loved ones. For Brady's family. For our children and our parents. For our teachers and our coaches. For our priests and our deacons. For our bishop. Let us pray too that as we remember from the places of our faith. That God is not to blame for our suffering and losses. But he is with us in them. And calling us to them. Him through them. That we must not run away from him, but run to him with all that breaks our hearts. In doing so, let us pray that we will fall all the more in love with God, who joins us in our greatest trials and carries us into our greatest triumph. Then as we experience life, the good and the bad, let us pray that we also come to know God more, better, accurately, and love God more completely, and serve God passionately and one another out of love for Him, so that whenever we find ourselves feeling stranded and alone along a swollen bank after a great and terrible storm in our lives, we might be able to look into the faces of more and more people around us and know that they too, with Christ, can be trusted. And we all can, as one community of faith and trust in one God, help each other on our journey to the other side, to the safe shores of heaven, to our eternal home. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers now to his. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Brady, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. For our church and parish family, that we may be a community of hope in the promise of Jesus' resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor, the suffering, the abused, and the forgotten, that they may have places of honor and welcome among us, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the recovering, and the dying, that the compassion of Jesus may be present to them in our prayers and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family of Brady and all who mourn the deaths of loved ones, that in our loving support they may find strength to continue their own life journeys. Let us pray to the Lord.
Lord God, give her a peace and heal her of souls. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. You are my joy, you are my song, you are the will, the one I'm drawing from, you are my refuge, my whole life long, where else would I go, surely my God is the strength of my soul. Your love defends me, your love defends me, and when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me, your love defends me, day after day, night after night. I will remember you're with me in this fight Although the battle, it rages on The war is already won I know the war is already won Surely my God strength of my soul your love defends me your love defends me and when I feel like I'm all alone Lord your love defends me your love defends me as we sing all salvation hallelujah surely my God is the strength of my soul your love defends me your love defends me and when I feel like I'm all alone your love your love defends me. We sing hallelujah. You're my portion, my salvation. Hallelujah. You're my portion, my salvation hallelujah you're my portion my salvation surely my God is the strength of my soul your love defends me your love defends me and when i feel like i'm all alone no your love defends me your love defends me
And brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify these offerings we bring, O Lord, that the parents who now entrust to you the child you gave to them may come to embrace him with joy in your kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, the Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of death may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel if you're able, and if not, please be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
until you come again until you come again therefore O Lord as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis de Sales, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Remember your servant Brady, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son and a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we ask that you give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you are God as you are. We shall become like you for all ages and praise you without end. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and, and live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other an appropriate sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Just a few instructions for Holy Communion. We'll have uh, four uh, lanes for that. Uh, two in the center on either side of Brady, right up against the foot of the steps of the sanctuary, and then two over here also um, for our side um, pews. We'll also have a, a fifth per, uh, person distributing a uh, low gluten host. Um, so um, if um, you're able to receive Holy Communion, and please come up uh, uh, w w with your hands out to be able to receive Holy Communion. Um, we do ask that you continue to do social distancing. If you're with a group that you're close to and with all the time, um, you can stay close as you come up. But if you're not, we just ask for some separation between the persons that are in front of you and that are behind you. If you're not able to receive Holy Communion but you would like a blessing, please indicate that with your body, Pastor. Just put your hands over your arms and your shoulders like that, and then we'll be able to give you a blessing. Maria 
Let us pray. Having received the communion of your Son's body and blood, O oh Lord, we ask you faithfully to comfort amid the sorrows of this life those whom you have graciously nourished by these sacred mysteries, so as to strengthen their hope of life eternal through Christ our Lord. St. Francis de Sales Church today is just brimming over with all kinds of love. I see the love that you have as a family, and your love for each other will keep you strong. Your love for Brady and your love for each other makes all the difference in the world. It lifts all of us up as we bear witness to your great love. I want you to know, too, that this church is filled with love of all of us who are here, for all of you. You have a lot of people who really care about you and who love Brady, who have been loved by Brady, and who promise we love you always. And the love of God just ties it all together. They say love is stronger than death. And that's true because Christ's love and Christ's death has conquered it death forever. And the love of God means that Brady lives. That he lives. And that we'll know that he's around. <laughs> and we'll sense his love because of God. And so trusting in God, we have prayed together for Brady. And now we come to our farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Brady again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
and to be To your hands, Father of mercies. We commend our brother Brady in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestowed upon Brady in his life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. I believe in the sun I believe in the risen one I believe I overcome By the power of his blood Amen dead in the grave I was covered in grief and pain I heard mercy call my name and he rolled the stone
as he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song join the one that never ends. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he I know he holds my life, my future in his hand. Amen. Amen. I'm alive, I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Let my song join the one that never ends. Amen. Amen. I'm alive. I'm alive because He lives. Amen. Amen. My son, join the one that never ends because he lives. Because Christ lives. decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back now No turning back I have decided To follow Jesus I have decided To follow Jesus I have decided To follow Jesus No turning back No, no turning back Though none can go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, this world behind me. The cross before me and the world behind me. The cross before me and the world behind me. No turning back, Lord. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. Lord, no turning back, no turning back. 